Hello again, my little angels. This is Pop Pop. We're going to read The Five Dog Night. Ezra lived alone in a small house, high on a windy hilltop. Well, not exactly alone. He had five dogs for company. And halfway down the hill lived old Betty. She visited Ezra almost every day, rain or shine. Ezra loved his dogs, but he figured he could pretty much take or leave old Betty. When Ezra saw her climbing up the hill to his house, he grumbled to his dogs, Ah, here comes that busybody Betty. And as soon as he said that, all five dogs were up and running down the hill. They barked, they wagged their tails, they licked Betty's face. She gave them each a cookie. Hmm, <laughs> grumbled Ezra. You spoil those dogs. They're supposed to chase you away. Posh, said Betty. I brought you some cookies, too. I'll make us a pot of tea. Ah, uh, don't bother yourself, said Ezra. But Betty made tea. Fall is here, she said. The leaves are turning. It's going to be chilly tonight. Uh, you better have an extra blanket. I don't need blankets, said Ezra. Everyone needs blankets said Betty. Not me, said Ezra, his mouth full of cookies. Stubborn as a mule, said Betty as she headed home. Nosy as a mouse sniffing for cheese, Ezra muttered as he fed the dogs. And that night, Breeze blew from the north. Down in her house, Betty put on an extra blanket on her bed. But up in his house, Ezra did not need a blanket, not even an extra blanket. The next chilly morning, Betty climbed the hill to visit Ezra. Whew! Chilly night last night, said Betty. Ah, not too bad, said Ezra. It was only a one-dog night. What are you talking about, said Betty. And Ezra just winked at his dogs. Crazy as a loon, said Betty. Nosy old bitty, Ezra muttered. And during the next weeks, all the leaves turned red and gold. Then one day, a wind came down and it rained, knocking the last of the leaves from the trees. Betty told Ezra, Winter is coming. I hear it's going to be clear up tonight and get so cold, there'll be ice on the puddles by morning. Surely you'll need a blanket. Nope said Ezra. I won't. That night was so chilly, Betty had to get up at 2 a.m. to find another blanket. She could just see Ezra's house in the moonlight. Oh, that stubborn old mule is probably up there shivering and quivering in the cold. But up in his house, Ezra was not shivering and quivering with the cold. The next day, Ezra was carrying in wood for his stove when Betty came up the hill. Ooh, cold last night, said Betty. The last of my garden froze and shriveled and died. Ah, oh, it wasn't so bad, said Ezra. It was only a two-dog night. Hmm, said Betty. 
talking crazy again. Oh, you better cover up tonight. They say a snowstorm is coming our way. I'm not worried, said Ezra. And that night, the first snow fell. Down in her house, Betty took out her winter quilt. But up in his house, Ezra didn't need any winter quilts. The next morning, Betty put on her boots and her heavy winter coat, and she climbed up the hill to check on Ezra. He was warming himself by the stove. I brought you a blanket, said Betty. I don't use blankets, said Ezra. I said it before. I'll say it again. But it was freezing cold last night, said Betty. You catch pneumonia. Ah, it wasn't so bad, said Ezra. It was only a three-dog night. Oh, gibberish, said Betty. That's all that is. But the weather is going to get worse, and you'll need this blanket soon. The next couple of weeks, it snowed again, and then again. In fact, the snow got so deep it reached halfway up Ezra's windows. Then one night, an icy north wind blew the clouds from the sky, uncovering the stars, and the temperatures dropped to zero. But Ezra, didn't use Betty's blanket. The next morning, Betty chugged up the hill in her car to visit Ezra. She brought hot chocolate in a thermos. It's too cold to walk, she said. It's freezing last night. Did you use the blanket? Nope, said Ezra. It was only a four-dog night. <sighs> The colder it gets, the crazier you get, said Betty. Ugh, the colder it gets, the nosier you get, mumbled Ezra. The next days were so cold, the trees cracked and the rivers froze solid. And one evening, in an arctic wind howled around Ezra's house, the temperature dropped well below zero. Even Ezra's largest and furriest dog would not stay outside. Betty piled all of her blankets and coats onto her bed. She stoked the wood stove with extra logs. Oh, Ezra will have to stoke his stove all night she thought as she shivered under her blanket. He'll have to use that blanket or he'll turn into a block of ice. The next morning, Betty was so concerned about Ezra that she drove up to his house just as the sun was rising, before she even had eaten breakfast. There was no smoke coming out of Ezra's chimney. <gasps> No fire in the wood stove, said Betty. It's frozen to death. She opened Ezra's door and peeked inside, and there was Ezra snoring happily without any blankets on at all. And the dogs raised their heads and growled. Shh, it's only me, whispered Betty. The dogs jumped off the bed, barked and wagged their tails, and Ezra woke up. What's going on? He asked. Well, I was just checking to see if you're all right, said Betty. Well, don't, roared Ezra. You, you nosy old bitty body. Whoa. If that's the way you feel, I, I won't, I won't, ever, ever 
again, shouted Betty. You, you old grouch. She walked out of the house, slammed the door, and drove back down the hill. Well, I guess that old busybody won't nose around here again, Ezra told the dogs. Good riddance! Not one tail wagged. Weeks went by. The weather turned warmer. The snow melted. The dog lay around in the front yard watching the road. And Betty didn't come up the hill. Awfully quiet around here, Ezra said to the dogs. It's almost spring. I'm feeling gloomy as a stormy sky. Can't figure it out. Around the time the first daffodils were poking out of the ground, Ezra baked some cookies. Then he put on his cleanest shirt and walked down the hill. The dogs came with him. Within earshot of Betty's house, they were greeted by the sound of barking. Five dogs exploded out of Betty's gate and raced up the road toward them. Betty came after them. Shh, quiet, she shouted. Stop! Uh, new dogs, said Ezra. Hmm. I got them in January said Betty. They are better company than some people I know. Well, I can brew a pot of tea to go with these cookies I made, said Ezra. Don't know any dogs can do that. Well, I guess that's true, said Betty. Uh, it's getting warmer, said Ezra, as he boiled water for tea. It certainly is, said Betty. Last night was only a one-dog night. You catch your death of pneumonia, said Ezra. Last night was a two-dog night. I hope you enjoyed this, little sweetheart. Love you much.